Yeah. I mean, I got so much, so many messages and, and so many comments of just people saying, you guys have, you, you're the luckiest people in the world. You selected the best place to wait this out, like stay as long as you can. Welcome to Forever Young, the health podcast from Lanzerhof. My name is Nils Behrens and I'm not looking for eternal use. I'm trying to find answers to what leading a healthy life really means. Therefore, I will be talking to various health experts to find out what you can do to stay fit for as long as possible. And who knows, perhaps this knowledge will help lead you to a longer life after all. Welcome to Forever Young. This is our first episode in English, and I have learned that you should always start with a bang. The bang of this episode are my two amazing guests. First of all, I would like to start with Tess Ward. Tess Ward is a chef, she's a food consultant, she's an author, and she's also the host of the podcast Down the Rabbit Hole with Tess Ward. The concept of this podcast is pretty clear. She is speaking with everybody about every subject which she's found which she found interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. It is. It's kind of a it's a, ve a very mixed um, assortment of things that I'm discussing from contemporary culture to science to spirituality to wellness. My my kind of cooking philosophy has always been orientated around wellness and health. And so that's always been a kind of a strong interest, but there's been undercurrents of other things, especially as I'm currently a student of psychology and neuroscience at King's in London. I'm doing a master's. So there's a lot of different things integrated in there. But I have some incredible guests. Nils, you should come on. It's mainly sex, everyone, but yeah. <laughs> Excellent. No. And I have learned that you have written a real bestseller. It's not The Naked Chef, it's The Naked Diet, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, it's the Naked Diet and then the Naked Cookbook is the same. And um, it's, uh, yeah, it was it was quite a while ago now. I really enjoyed writing about food and, and cooking, but it's I've had a an interesting kind of path with it, I suppose. I'm starting with any career. I think you fall in love with something and you kind of cycle through phases with it. But yeah, I'm kind of falling back in love with it again, which is lovely. In quarantine, what else am I going to do? Apart from become like a Jane Fonda fitness blogger. My second guest is Sophie Herman. Hello, Sophie. Hello. Sophie is originally from Germany, but she lives in London for a while already. She is a designer and she's also very well known as TV actress of this very successful format Made in Chelsea. Yes. <laughs> still running 19 seasons, 10 years. We're still there. I've tried to explain what Made in Chelsea is to my German friends, and it's not that easy. I said it is more or less a little bit like Sex in the City, but from London in a scripted reality format. Well, it's not really scripted. That's the thing. It is real life, and it's based on our real life stories. So... Um, Writing a script, you can't really do that. You you can have like, you know, sometimes we cover like key topics, but mostly it's like go with the flow. All right. Let's talk about health because we are in health podcast. The reason why I invited you to is because of your stay at Lanzerhof Tegernsee. You arrived at the beginning of the Corona crisis and... My first question is, when you travel to Germany, Tegernsee, Bavaria, weren't you a little bit afraid of stranding there? I would have loved to have been stranded there, <laughs> honestly. I mean, so good question. Um, as I mentioned before we started recording, it was my birthday right at the very end of March, the 25th, which was the week after we were at Lanzerhof. And I kind of, I've had a bit of a weird year in terms of just lots has been going on and I haven't had enough time for self-care. And so Sophie and I had this conversation and she said, you know, why don't we go and do something that is nurturing for us, for our bodies, for our minds. We can take a pause, a break from work and just kind of reconnect, basically. And so we decided to go and, and and it was a thought in my mind at the time but we both you know masked up looking like kind of extras from kind of a little bit like Naomi and Eddie from Ab Fab. Yeah. yeah exactly 
but kind of like extras from Ab Fab have gone a little bit kind of giant cheek. And so we, yeah, decided to go. And it was, a, it was actually a lovely time because, you know, we had all of the use of the facilities to ourselves and it was, I mean, the weather was incredible. So there was a, there was a thought in mind about it, you know, maybe getting stranded, but I was like, oh, you know, I'll get the violin out. I'll be stuck there. What a shame. Yeah, exactly. Fingers <laughs> crossed we're stranded. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, in my case, my dad is based in Munich and my mom lives in Stuttgart and I'm privately insured in Germany. So I thought, you know what, if I'm going to get stranded, even better. So, you know, it's a bit of a blessing in disguise. And I wanted to visit my dad anyway because it was his birthday afterwards. And um, so I also wanted to get my body like at to the healthiest peak as it could be to basically go out then afterwards and battle this pandemic. Um, Tess and me have like actually done exactly like <sighs> yeah. Um, <laughs> And I had cu a couple of infusions already prior to my journey to um, Tegensee at the Lanzerhof um, uh, on Dover Street together with the Arts Club. And they were actually amazing because um, I felt a little bit ill, like when was that mid, around mid-February. I wasn't sure what it was. And, and at the time, there were no tests available. And I went masked up into the um, uh, Lanzerhof, got two IV drips within two, uh, one week, and I felt great. So I was like, okay, let's take this even further and, and, and let's make a week of it, which then in my case, luckily turned into two weeks of Lanzerhof, which was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but um so you yeah. did essentially get stranded there you did end up end up I did. Well, I mean, stranded but I kind of I loved it so much so I wanted to extend I begged I was like please let me stay for one more week but also um Tess and me have done uh fitness retreats before but we've never done a health retreat as as like as this that. was much more medical for sure like yes. so that's a really good point because so Sophie and I actually met in the mountains in Switzerland, hiking, I was there like, come on, you can do it. You were I'm hiking, I was swearing. Not. Yeah. <laughs> I was insulting I'm everything. Sickness will not get you. Um, and so we were kind of, it was a really interesting experience. So basically we were doing a kind of, we were walking between uh, like mountain treks between the three peaks. So basically what a ski run. And Sophie and I were there with respective friends and we all bonded and it was an amazing kind of group experience we were all kind of connecting um together and sharing in this kind of what was really ultimately a kind of fitness retreat challenge yeah. kind of thing uh, and that was super bonding and i have i've always just since then had such a warm spot in my heart which is so and so our kind of um and we've also done another retreat before together in Mykonos but this yeah. has been our first one that's been more medical and there's yeah. been obviously some challenges that come with that which is that you're looking at flushes <laughs> and such which are intimate experiences for friends to be sharing and you have to know someone quite closely to be going through that kind of Plans do do. experience and not wanna. <laughs> so, um, is it uh, possible that you can probably describe for our listeners what your daily routine at Lanza of looked like? Yes. Yeah. So, um, if I, I'm actually now at this point where I'm missing the taste of bitter Epsom salts in the morning. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this Same. is what I get now. I'm three weeks back in my flat now, isolating, and I'm missing this taste. So basically, you wake up every morning. They already have glasses ready for you in the evening that you take to your room. Then you fill them up with lukewarm water, like this much, and you neck it in the morning, first thing. Then you can't have anything for about half an hour. So these salts start working in your guts. Um, down they go. Mm -hmm. Down they go. I mean, honestly, oh, in the beginning, agree. I was like, this is the worst thing I've ever done. I, I, I don't know why I set up for this. And this is terrible. And then after three days, because I also tested me, what I love about the Lanzerhof is it's complete it's a complete medical approach and they do uh, give you a proper examination they take your blood and and check for your uh, what, what you're basically allergic like aka inflammatory but, but, it's, but it's much more than that. bespoke it's, that's what i love it's 
fat content, muscle content, um, obviously your heart rate, but like much more in depth than kind of looking at the kind of urine samples, everything. Everything. Yeah. So that's what you do in the beginning. Actually, you've got your doctor's appointment. And so they evaluate all of your um, statistics and then make create a bespoke plan for you. It also depends what you want to do. So I obviously wanted to lose weight because Quarren Swine over here wanted to eat herself afterwards. Ah! So, <laughs> um, so I thought it's, me, it's I, like the more I, I can lose, the, the more I can later gain back in quarantine. It sounds like a plan. So I, 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 I can't confirm that you had to lose something because I've seen you Thank before. You. But she's uh, gorgeous. She doesn't uh, need to lose any. But like I, I understand the feel. Like for me, I was like, oh, I, I'm bloated. My digestion was terrible, and I have sometimes issues with my liver. Not because I'm an alcoholic or I drink too much. I'm smiling like it's on. true, but I'm not. No, I'm no. not. But like. No, but like I, um, I, I, when I was in India, when I was 18, I got a parasite and it really affected my digestion for like five years. And I had extraordinary problems with my bowels and stuff. We won't go into detail. Sexy. Tell of, me more, it, Tess. It, it put a lot of strain <clears throat> on my liver. So the constant thing that comes up when I have liver tests is that I have a raised enzyme. Mm. So obviously the liver is responsible for quite a lot of the detox process and such and I was just feeling bloated and lethargic and you know it's just a lot of my body was just feeling it was feeling wintry heavy and damp Mm. and like a bear yeah I I know what you mean my body felt like if it had to be a food it was a beef stew not like a (laughs) summer salad do you know what I mean (laughs) oh god <laughs> oh my, my body, god my, That's so true. my body my body was like a fatty beef stew i don't even eat meat like, <laughs> but it felt like that <laughs> so um so for me, i was like yes um i want to be put on a, a diet that you know obviously lighter in calories but it's also really good for your brain it's really good for your um your uh neuronal function to have a slight calorie deficit it's not just in the body yeah um so I was like great I've got exams for neuroscience coming up let's let's cut back on this food cleanse out my body and I'm gonna come out like a superwoman ready to battle corona like xena warrior princess <laughs> exactly <laughs> sorry because you just mentioned the food um so normally you're getting the the diet here by prescription um how was it for you uh, is it something you could handle was it easy to handle or were you starving or uh, what about the so experience you, you go first <clears throat> okay you more extreme yeah well i had the more hardcore approach because as i said i wanted to really detox and 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 also like f- completely fast and give my body that that time to kind of like be basically reset and then uh, slowly add ingredients also so I see what kind of reactions they provoke. Um, so the first two days I had a little bit of porridge in the morning and um, then nothing, nothing, nothing. And very early in the morning, by the way, for me, especially at 6 a.m., I'm not a morning person at all. Ooh. Tess knows how much <laughs> I've known. But, I would be uh, up at like 5 a.m. like, morning, darling. Would you like your bitter soul? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. She's the bitter soul fairy. Um, and then, um, so when we schlepped ourselves to breakfast at 6 a.m., I had the porridge. Seven. Then, seven was breakfast. Yeah, true. Um, then we did, salt. <clears throat> then, um, <clears throat> then I did a super light workout because I I need a lot of energy to do to do my proper workout. So I did like more stretches, or I had other appointments. I mean, you guys really kept us busy there um, with other treatments. Um, uh, one time I was wrapped in algae mud, which was amazing. And then you have steamed vegetables for lunch, together with a chewing school bread that of your choice. Um, wait, I chose, wait, 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 wait. It's I not chose, chewing school. It's a chewing trainer to help well, encourage you, you to chew, chew saliva. Chew school. <laughs> That's I like how that. I call it. I like that. And yeah. I would have a protein, but yeah. Yes. Exactly. So I just had vegetables and a little bit of buckwheat toast for lunch. And you eat it super, super slow. And um, you almost feel your stomach shrinking over the first three days, it, it, which is incredible. 
but I'm not going to lie. Like I, I, I used to drink a lot of coffee since the last one and a half years. And I got immense headaches. I got, I just felt really like a bit drained and not very energetic. So, but after the third day, things are, were starting to look completely different. That was also because on the third day, um, I decided to do a liver cleanse for the first time in my life. Um, <laughs> Neil, wait, wait, before, you warned before, me about this. I want before, you, I want you. You warned me. Before, before you say about the liver cleanse, I'm just going to quickly say for my diet experience, quick, because it was different. Like mine, oh, yeah, I, I know, had, to Sorry, and I had broth every evening. That was it. Nothing else. Yeah, so... I I'd had finish. more than that. So I'd have the same, we'd have the same breakfast, but I'd have an optional protein extra. So I could have maybe some, uh, like a, some spread or I could have um, two different spreads and toast instead of porridge. And then I also had a little piece of fish or whatever protein supplement I wanted at lunch. Smoke trout always. The, just broth. Or the, the tartare, that was so nice. The yeah. tartare, especially with fennel. Anyway, the food was just, simple but really good produce like all the fish from the lake which for me like I don't like to eat seafood unless I'm next to the sea and like it was lovely yeah. just really simple but really delicious food and it was perfect because I didn't feel like I wanted loads more I was like okay I've, I've had what I need yeah. and like listen to my body but same the first three days I had the worst kind of caffeine headache and I was exhausted like I was mm. when we first arrived. I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna do a little bit of a workout. We're we're gonna go so we were like, we're gonna go to sauna. We're gonna go have a steam. Yeah. Maybe we'll just do a little bit of a cross train and then maybe some Pilates moves." And we were both like, "Ugh," on the bed, like <laughs> fell asleep, we, like couldn't move because my body. It just you know, I needed the some rest. I needed some rest time, and you don't realize when you're. We both live in London. We're busy on the go all the time, and like it, you, when you kind of hit that pause button it takes your body a minute to like stop moving you're kind of still like going yeah. forward until you have to do you know what I mean like a car braking and um so I uh yeah the the first three days were tough but then afterwards like I'm quite an energetic person I felt like superwoman from eating less food and working out like a good amount and yeah, also good, just right? kind of and just sleeping really well relaxing mm. like listening to my body like Oh, and we to went back. to bed at like 8 30 every night that yeah. which was crazy yeah i was quite astonished to see that um you have posted some workouts on on instagram and um i was really impressed by your power you've got for for this kind of workouts that was uh, after the liver cleanse that was after the cleanse <laughs> I was definitely incentivizing the workout because obviously I had more food and had more energy. And I think yeah. we're kind of, we're a good yin and yang. Sophie's good at the relaxing and the like, we have some time on the balcony now. Do you know what I mean? You, you know can't get relax. that vitamin D in as well. Right. So, yeah. I'm, I'm like a Duracell bunny and I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very. Let's do a Tracy Anderson video. Um, no thanks. <laughs> but, What's um, for, I mean, so, for example, I've been the, doing that yesterday. Oh my god, it's a killer! Like, you're doing this every day on your trampoline? No, 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 no. I'm not doing every day. I'm doing trampolining maybe three times a week, and Tracy Anderson maybe two times a week or three times a week. Good. Write anyway. that down, everyone. <laughs> Was there anything <laughs> that you did not expect it? Was a surprise uh, for you? Lanzerhof. Yes. Um, no, that's a really interesting question. I think for, for me, I didn't expect to find having no people there as relaxing and enjoyable as I did. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, like it's you true. Think, you think you think it's going to be, you know, oh, everyone's, you know, they're like, oh, we're, we're lower capacity at the moment. There's not so many people around. But like Sophie and I keep our, ourselves entertained so easily and the staff are so lovely. And it just had we had more time to read. We had more time to use the facilities and make use of them alone. There weren't anyone. It wasn't anyone else there. And it was just the kind of it was it felt like we were in a country house for the weekend with a whole bunch of people looking up <laughs> and it was like just us and every everyone else was tending to us it was quite yeah. it, was, it was it was a little it was a little decadent put it that way yeah I mean I got so much 
um, so many messages and and so many comments Same. of just people saying you guys have you you're the luckiest <laughs> people in the world you selected the best place to wait this out like stay as long as you can Corona so like queen. I'm, well I'm, done I'm, yeah the, exactly. the quarantina yeah so we definitely made the right decision of coming there 100 but um i was also for me just a surprise in general was like things like doing the liver cleanse for example or even a colonic sexy um let's get that have in. you never done one before i've never yeah. done a colonic before in my life i was always They're very good. very scared and um and i know niels loves it as well <laughs> Leos hates it, but but I have to say I've done twice who, who in the end. Who doesn't love a hose up the bum? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, what did I want to say now? Now you brought me out of my. Uh, anyway, so I, in, at the end of my trip, I've done two colonics, one liver cleanse, and I felt so amazing. My stomach normally is always a bit bloated. No matter what I eat, I can eat a bre- grape, and it bloats. At the time when I left, it was almost going like inwards. It was so soft, like you can really feel how like gut health is is so becoming she, completely different. Well, when she left, it was to look like it must in the nineties, and she definitely achieved that within exactly. Two. When you turn to the side, and you're like invisible. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything? Is there anything that you take from your stay as a kind of? learning which you have have um now um yeah took over into your daily life is a, a yeah. kind of routine or anything with really uh, a good which... question really good you, question you go first I, i've i've definitely sophie and i've talked about this kind of since we left like after it obviously was my birthday um so i had one day where i just kind of had a really big celebration but the kind of the they say it takes like 30 days to make a habit form And I feel like since I came back from Lanzerhof, I've been much more kind of intuitive about when I eat. So I don't stick so much to meal times, but I don't eat for like three hours before I go to bed and then going to bed early, waking up early, definitely chewing my food a lot better. And I'm still doing the bitter salts because I understand um, it's a funny thing trying to explain kind of Epsom salts, bitter salts, same kind of thing. But magnesium helps to flush everything through your body quicker. And it's not the same. It's not a laxative. And it's really hard to kind of explain exactly what it means to move everything along faster. But our digestion is so complicated and it's so long and it's got so many different, you know, parts to get through and everything and so pushing everything out through your body much quicker it just means that everything is just working more efficiently and I find that actually it stops me from feeling sluggish and tired so I'm maintaining with the bitter salts not every day but every few days when I need it and things kind of like um simple simple foods you know like um I've been cooking quite a lot of Italian style food and a lot of things that just require only very few ingredients instead of because I find that when you overcomplicate food and you're adding lots of things in it actually makes you almost hungrier because you're you're you have all these different tastes going in your mouth and and I think it, it complicates the digestive system and the stomach so I try to kind of for example I've been making things like a parmigiana parmigiana melanzane so like an aubergine with tomato and then mm. some kind of cheese mm. at the top things like that and if I make pasta I make it with like some wild garlic it's wild garlic season at the moment so like wild garlic Lovely. sauce with gnocchi or pasta I love it or or just very simple baked fish um with some greens so quite and I, I'm actually really enjoying that I'm not yeah so simplicity taking time sticking to the salt I've, I'm I'm it's all of the knowledge and the remembering is percolating um for me because of this like whole elimination diet almost what we did where we cut out almost everything and then added slow slowly um different uh ingredients i found out that i have a huge intolerance to egg and i used to have eggs almost every day and apparently that's it was quite interesting so what you have like on a regular basis every day a lot of such as almond milk in my case and eggs and stuff or even celery because i have celery juice every day 
Um, I basically um, had a higher inf inflammatory rate for that. So I got advice by the doctor to cut this out for a while. The longer, the better. Um, uh, and then I can basically add it slowly again to my diet. And I realized this after the first week on the first Sunday, we got one egg for this because it was Sunday, special time, yes. special, special treat. You get an egg today. And um, honestly, I thought I have a like scarabeus, like mummy monster in my stomach that's laying eggs and eating itself out of me it was awful I had the worst cramps and since I came since uh, I mean it's been now three weeks that I'm back home and I didn't have any eggs and I feel great so I'm yeah. trying to stick to cutting out um what because you get afterwards you get like a whole um plan on how to continue with your diet and what you can add and what you what you should leave, leave out for a while so I tried to really stick to that I even brought this to my mother's house in Stuttgart where everyone in Stuttgart is like oh what you want vegan kind of like fledle with your spargel like you so um basically uh it's really it's really hard but I it's, don't know it's what a this nice means. <clears throat> sorry vegan, so you know you no know, you know the, the remember the pancake where i told you it's a swabian delicacy and you wrap it around the asparagus like a swabian burrito yeah. um yeah i tried to make that in a vegan um uh, as a vegan option um in stuttgart oh, with it's nice it gives you new free. challenges yeah. You were saying you were trying to make it gluten free with test flour and it fell yes, apart. You the me a test flour. Yes, I remember. Oh, that Ethiopian test flour that looked like a cow shit or something. It was awful. Oh my God. <laughs> it was terrible. So, but in general, you, you like the food. In general, I loved it. It's it's a new challenge now to kind of go home and recreate the kind of same things. I'm having porridge almost, almost every day, every morning. Are you? Mm hmm. Like a little Are bit, yeah. You? Yeah. So for me, for me, so I'm never not a fan had of porridge. I'm, I'm not a fan. So breakfast, definitely, I, I like. I've never been a fan of porridge. I think it's because it's something that my mum used to give to me before school when I was a kid. Um, but the rye bread, I've always been a fan of like the mm. dark kind of German rye bread. Um, actually, we it's were so having good. buckwheat toast, but the buckwheat toast is quite similar. So I've been having like that with a little avocado on it in the morning. And, um, it's, it's nice. Like it's, it's the food, it's, it, it basically, I think the best part of it is you feel satiated. Or I did anyway with the diet I was on. Um, it doesn't leave you wanting more and your palate feels like it's had what it needs, but it's not, but it's so enjoyable to eat. But I, who knew fennel, braised fennel tastes so good on this home. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So that's just a yeah. testament. I think it's a testament to produce always. Yeah. You know, if you have good produce, the food's going to taste good. Definitely. But I'm also going to try, um, I mean, it's it's really hard because obviously when you're quarantining by yourself, like the devil is waiting for you in the kitchen <laughs> and you see him quite some time. But um, I'm really trying to, you know, just cut out dinner completely at least once a week and have that kind of, um, intermittent fasting going on I don't have breakfast too early here with because you know I mean I, I don't need to wake up so early so I don't since I hate I'm not a morning person but um, I do have my porridge now and I try to go to bed um, at earlier times um, and just you know just try to live, to live a bit more mindful and listen to what my body needs and like also to stop when I'm not hungry anymore just be i'm normally like very german you know like i'll oh, finish everything that's on the plate otherwise it won't shine the sun won't shine tomorrow um yeah i don't know why but this is very implemented in my brain and to always finish the plate and it's not it's, right. a, it's something i grew up with as well especially grandparents and things my my granny my grandfather was a farmer I say farmer loosely because he was like not never there. But um, my granny was just the most amazing cook, and I remember all the way through my childhood, she'd be like, "The starving children in the world. How could you, you know, all yeah, of that?" Yeah. So you have that idea in your mind, but I think training yourself to eat intuitively is a really big thing. And also, often when I think I'm hungry, and I realized this actually when I, we were at Lanzerhof, we drink so much water, so much herbal tea. Yeah, so, so much, much of it is actually all the tea. All the tea. tea. 
so much of it is like first you know I've I've been so much better about drinking loads of water especially because my my house my flat is the top two floors of like an Edwardian um, house in North London and it's very warm like the heating I only have on like four months of the year because it's really just hot the whole house mm. and so I'm naturally perspiring more than <laughs> <laughs> like like I'm in a you know a a natural sauna environment so I really need to make sure to drink a lot of water and I've been a lot better about that since yeah since we got back yeah I would say thank you very much. Thank you very much for sharing the experience. Also, thank you very much. I just mentioned in the beginning of this interview before the recording started that uh, for me, it was really so much fun to follow your stay on Instagram because um, everything on Instagram, even in on, 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 yeah, the news and everywhere was only Corona, only negative news. And um, it really felt like you were in a... I don't know, different world. You were in such a good mood. You had so much fun. And uh, it was really, really for me, my highlight of the day to follow your stories oh. uh, because um, it was the, probably one of the very rare positive vibes I had uh, on, on any channel. So <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you for oh, sharing your... Thank you so much, Nia. Cute. That's lovely. It's so lovely to hear because obviously our concern always at the time is when we're sharing an experience is like yeah. it should be like fun and escapism and it should be fun for everybody to watch and they should feel kind of like they might be at home but like to try the workouts or be inspired exactly. to maybe like when they can escape corona like maybe this is a really good place to go and like check out and invest in some self-care um yeah but, but that's so lovely to hear that's always our aim. i mean we had conversations about that that was always our aim to like entertain everybody as well exactly it was the perfect sound of music getaway <laughs> the hills were alive the sure. hills were alive <laughs> Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you also for my you, first yes. episode. Even if I didn't have the uh, didn't have the opportunity to say so much, but it was uh, again great to listen to you. Maybe and next time, Niels. Maybe next time, <laughs> and um, I hope that we will see us soon in real life. Yes, for sure. Please. I'd love that. When we what, speaking where, of the new one, the new speaking, one, wait, exactly. the new one is open. What, the, where, when it's opening, it's next to Hamburg. What's it called? Sit, sit, sit. Zult, All right, I need to work my Yeah. Zult. Yeah, the Zult, Zult is the German Hamptons. Uh, we will open it uh, next year. But, Excuse me. Um, yeah. <laughs> Lovely. I we'll think, be there I think the we, we will definitely have to be there. For sure. Yes. <laughs> okay, we stop the recording. Thank you very much and uh, okay, yeah. see you soon. Thank, thank you so thank much, Niels. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>